This is Airy TV. You're watching, dear viewers. Welcome to English News Broadcast for this hour. I'm your reporter, Bersabe Takhla, and following are the major headlines for today. Call made for developing irrigation farming in Gashbarka region. Efforts exerted to ensure all round participation of women. Kenya flood toll rises as recovery of bodies continue. And the UN says Myanmar junta's war against rebels displaces millions. On your local reports, Ambassador Mahmoud Ali Hiroui, governor of Gashbarka region, called on vegetable farmers to develop and boost their products, both in quality and quantity, through ensuring water supply. Upon visiting vegetable farmers in the Fort Osawa subzone, Ambassador Mahmoud expressed gratitude to the farmers for their efforts in maintaining a steady supply and stabilizing the market through their products. He also advised them to make prudent use of their resources and consult with agricultural experts to implement contemporary irrigation farming practices. Ambassador Mahmoud also called for sustainable water and soil conservation with a view to enriched underground water supply and for protection of indigenous trees. The vegetable farmers on their part expressed readiness to carry out regular water and soil conservation activities and called on the Minister of Agriculture to organize training program with a view to enable vegetable farmers apply modern irrigation farming system and boost their production both in quality and quantity. Ms. Yehda Gayohannes, head of the National Union of Eritrean Women branch in Gashbarka region, called for exerting strong effort to ensure the participation of women in all sectors of development programs. Ms. Yehda Ga made the call at the National Union of Eritrean Women Board's inaugural meeting in the Tassane subzone. Indicating that the effort to ensure participation of women in social, political and development sectors is registering encouraging results, Ms. Yehdega called for more work for better outcome. Ms. Yehdega also said that strong effort has been exerted in cooperation with partners to develop economic capacity of the union and to avoid harmful practices that are negatively affecting the physical and psychological development of women. Mr. Siyum Gabriesus, administrator of the subzone, on his part, called on all women in the subzone to strengthen organizational capacity and participation in the national affairs. On your last local report, the Honey Farmers Association in the San Afis subzone reported that they are conducting strong effort to ensure supply of honey to the market with fair price. Mr. Ibrahim Suleiman, chairman of the association, indicating that the subzone is condu conducive for bee farming, both in climate and natural resources, said that sustainable awareness raising activities are being conducted to encourage bee farmers introduce modern beehives and boost their production and thereby stabilize the market. Mr. Ibrahim also called on vegetable and bee farmers to seek advice from agricultural experts before they apply and spray pesticides for their safety. The participants conducted extensive discussion on the issues raised at the meeting and adopted various recommendations. The Bee Farmers Association in San Afis subzone has 110 members, pressing 420 traditional and 350 modern beehives. The viewers will take a short break, but coming up will be international news and more. Do you stay tuned. Welcome back. The Kenya authorities on Saturday said that 10 people had been confirmed dead at the coast following three days of unrelenting heavy rains and floods. More than 20,000 families have been displaced across the three affected counties of Mombasa, Kalifi, Kual and Tena River. The Coast Regional Police Commissioner Roda Onyancha said on Saturday. Overall, dozens of people have died and thousands displaced across the country since the beginning of November, after heavy rains and floods caused by El Nino weather phenomena. 
The heavy rains and resulting floods have killed dozens more in neighboring countries, including Somalia and Ethiopia. On your final report, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has expressed his deep concern over the escalating conflict in Myanmar. According to the UN, the number of people displaced by the fighting has reached 2 million, and the Secretary General appealed to all sides to protect non combatants and open access for humanitarian aid. The striking success of an alliance of three ethnic armed groups in Shan State and driving the army and police out of large areas along the border with China has encouraged other opposition forces around Myanmar. In Kaya State, south of Shan State, along the border with Thailand, ethnic Kareni insurgents, who already control much of the state, are attacking the main town of Loika. Volunteer People's Defense Forces, formed by local activists back in 2021, have also launched their own attacks. The viewers, that was all with your reports for today. And now, a very quick recap of the major headlines. Call made for developing irrigation farming in Gashwaka region. Effort exerted to ensure all round participation of women. Kenya flood toll rises as recovery of bodies continue. And the UN says Myanmar junta war against the rebels displaces millions. The viewers, that was it for today. Thanks for watching and have a good one.